This video will show how to create a sizing curve. So the example used for this video is a corrosion sample data acquired with a corrosion probe on an aluminum sample. Um, I have different uh, subsurface defects in this sample and I, if I look at them, I have one here that is 75% deep on the far side of the plate. It's followed by a 50% deep so you can see that the amplitude of the defect and phase angle has changed. And I have a small one here at 25% uh, on the far side also. So the curve that will be created is for those three defects. Uh, so to create the sizing curve, uh, as you will see, we don't need to uh, scan data file. We can use a recorded data like I'm doing right now and just add the sizing curve on top of the current setup. So I will go in the wizard and first of all I will create new calibration point uh, corresponding to those uh, far side defects. So I open the calibration point step and I will add new defect. So depending how you want to perform your sizing curve you will have to define your size either in percentage or in millimeters. So the first flaw will be, um, you need to place a name for it. So in my case, I will use far, sorry, I will use, let's take far. Um, that's the far, uh, let's say 75%. It's on the far side of the plate, and it is 75% deep. You can notice the error message at the bottom saying that I need to reduce the value of my defect. The reason for this message, if you read carefully, it's because um, this, the, the unit of measurement right now is millimeters, and the value I place is 75 millimeters for the system and the maximum thickness is the thickness of my plate, 6.25. So if I want to place the defect in millimeters, I need to consider my maximum thickness. But if I want to size in percentage, then I can put just a value from 0 to 100%, uh, and it's going to be valid. So for this example, I'm going to use percentage sizing. I will add another flaw. So this one will be a far side, 50%. Um, so this is just name uh, that you're going to see when you do the calibration. So it's important to name them in a way that you will know which defect they are when you measure them on your calculate. And I will add the third one, which I will rename the same, far. 25%. It's on the far side and it's 25% deep. So, three new reference points that I will use for my sizing curve. So, I can tap finish. The system brings me to the calibration. I don't want to change it. So, I press next and then it suggests me to add a sizing curve. So, this is we have to do this. We just added reference point for the measurement, but we still need to have this sizing curve created. So I'm going to press add. And you can keep the default name. It's up to you. But in case that you create a multiple sizing curve for the same C-scan, adding a name might be good to discriminate them. So this one is for corrosion. So let's just type a name that is my corrosion curve. We're going to measure the flaw along the C-scan x-axis, which is the scanning axis. This is the uh, channel source, it's the frequency of the axial channel, so there's only one choice for that probe. And here you need to select if you're going to do a phase or amplitude curve. Usually when you do subsurface flaw sizing, 
the phase curve is the most appropriate because it is quite independent on the volume of the flaw. If you do surface, if you want to do surface sizing defect, um, the phase has not a much change uh, on most probe, so it could be better to use an amplitude curve. But you need to be uh, sure that the flaw that you measure are longer than the uh, coil size in your probe when you do such amplitude curve measurement. So for this one I use phase, so I press next. Then the method for measurement for an absolute probe like this probe, it's good to use peak-to-peak -peak first transition. And the shape, since I have three points, I can make a best fit polynomial between my different points. And I need to select which point is going to be used for this curve. So this is 3D fact that I will measure to create the curve. And this is selected correctly. I can press next. And my curve is created. So now, if you have a probe connected, you can rescan your sample. But if you use a recorded data, you, ch you can just tap on the data file itself to uh, read the file again, but with the new sizing curve created. So you can see at the bottom of the list as you hear, on the right, uh, lower right corner, there is a, a question mark with a percentage because my sizing curve is not calibrated yet. So I need to go in each reference and measure the, um, the signal. So this is my first signal. I make sure to use the most appropriate channel for the measurement. I go to the calibration menu and I select sizing curve and I can see my three reference defect. So the one I have selected right now is the 75% D. So I select 75 and I measure. Then I move to the 50%, select 50 and measure. And I move to the 25%, select it and hit measure. When you do those measurements, it's a good practice to also select for your angle measurement, the one that you have selected for your calibration curve, so peak to peak first transition, just to make sure that the measurement is done correctly, which is the case here, but it's always a good practice to use the same measurement mode as your sizing curve. When it's done, you hit calibrate and you can close. So now I have a reading at the lower right corner saying that this is a 25% far side defect. And if I move to the other one, this is 50, this is 73, 75, depending which channel it's you look at looking at it. And if you look at this huge flaw here that I'm having, this was a true hole. And if you look at the uh, readings, it's not far from giving me the right value. It's not totally correct because I've got some saturation here. But uh, you can see that the value is very close to it. If I look at the other flaw here, they are similar flaw, but with smaller diameter. So this is to show you how the phase curve is not so much affected by the size of the flaw. So here it's a, a flat bottom hole, half the size of the one I calibrated on, and it's still a 75%, measuring now at 73%. So you can see that the phase measurement is pretty accurate. Uh, here it's a 50 and it was a 50 on both and the last one should be a 25 and it's also measured at 25 and it's for uh, pit diameter half the size on the one that I calibrated. Um, so that's conclude the uh, video on how to create a sizing curve.